Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play so we can solve it together. All right, so, so this problem is really interesting because you have a fourth degree polynomial. Now, third degree and fourth degree polynomials, just so you know, they're not going to give you a situation where you have to go from this form and then find the factored form um, without using a graph or calculator. Using just the algebra to get from here to here is really in has a really interesting process, interesting properties, is a great discussion, but it's not something that's typically taught in high school, and it's not really appropriate for the sake of this video or topic discussion. If you get a higher degree polynomial, graph the thing to find out what the completely factored form would be. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we are trying to solve this thing. And you, you, know, you could try and factor it, because sometimes it'll give you situations where factoring by grouping will work. But let me just point out that here it will not. Um, so, for example, if you take n to the fourth, we combine, and then I have plus 4n cubed minus 9n squared minus 12 is minus 21n squared minus 36n plus 108. If the 108 had a term on it, a variable like n or n squared or something, you could maybe factor this thing. That's usually a hint that you could factor it using algebra. But in this case right here, I, no, I don't know any such technique. The algebraic technique is really interesting, um, but I don't know any appropriate technique for algebra 1 or algebra 2. So let's graph this thing. We have x to the fourth, okay, plus 4x cubed minus 21x squared minus 36x plus 108. If we graph this thing, let's just see what happens. How does it look for us? Okay. So you could, I mean, we could keep resizing this window to figure out what's going on. But what I like to do, you can either look at the table, you can see some of the zeros here, um, or you can use the graph by hitting graph and then second trace. And choice two, zero, that would tell you the zeros of the function. So for example, where is my cursor right now? It says x is at negative 0.85. Let's go up a little bit. You could estimate, let's look at the zero if I go back and forth between them. X is at a little bit above two here and then below two. So I'm assuming this will be at two, but let's confirm it. Pick a left bound, enter. Go to the right of the zero, hit enter, and then hit enter a third time. And you can see that's one of our zeros at two. Why is that helpful? Well. If 2 is a 0, then one of the factors is x minus 2, or in our case, n minus 2. Before we really talk about, I mean, we talk about the theorems behind this, but just think about a simple parabola. If you have a parabola and it crosses, let's say, oh, that was a much thicker pen than I needed, but let's say it crosses here. Let's just say this is 3, 0. Let's say this is negative 2, 0. That would mean the factored form, if x is negative 2, then one of the factors would be x plus 2. Because if x is negative 2, the whole thing would be 0, right? Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That's a factor. So, um, x plus 2 would be a factor if negative 2 is a 0. And then x minus 3 would be a factor if 3 is a 0. So the roots can tell us what the factors are. And if we go through each of them here, let's see what else we get. OK. So if I look, actually, I'm going to go to table mode now. All right. It's got all kinds of fun zeros in here. Let's see. And then see, it's climbing. The function's climbing. It doesn't seem to be turning again. So, okay. Uh, it doesn't prove anything here that it will, won't turn again. But let's just make some basic inferences. One of my zeros is at 6. So one of my factors is at n minus 6. Okay. And then I see one of my zeros is at n minus 3, so one of my factors is, uh, sorry, n equals negative 3, so one of my factors is n plus 3. We're getting there. And then, keep going, 2, we got that one already. 2 is a factor, 2 is a 0, so n minus 2 is a factor. 3 as well, so n minus 3 is a factor. I think that might be it. Let's see what happens. It starts climbing again. The function climbs, climbs, climbs. OK, I think we got it. So now we go back to our choices here. And what is the one that's closest? Right here, right? 
n plus 3, got that. n minus 3, got that. n minus 2, got that. And n minus 6, oops, I made that mistake. Let me go back. Why do I mess that one up? Let me go back here. Okay, so 6 is not a 0. If 6 was a 0, the factor would be n minus 6. I apologize. So here if I go back, look at this. I do that. So if, if my, negative 6 is a 0, n plus 6 is the factor. And that's choice 2. So, so just to recap, if you've got some crazy function, you could try to break it down algebraically, but if you can't find a way to do it, and under like a minute or two, and it's not going anywhere, graph the thing. Um, it, if you want to look up really cool formulas to see how crazy it would be to solve algebraically, just to get a sense of it, look it up. It's really fun. All right, I hope this helped.